Good day collectors and viewers, Social Distance Warrior is back and today we're going to look at our Return of the Jedi henchman, uh, Jabba's right hand guy, Bib Fortuna. So Bib Fortuna made his debut back in 1983 in uh, Return of the Jedi. Uh, it was a completely different alien from what we were used to seeing in the previous movies. Actually as a kid I was quite scared of his look but obviously fascinated because I love anything that was alien looking. And uh, Action Figure made its debut in 1983 on the Return of the Jedi 65 card back. And that's this guy right here. So you'll notice right away that there's a staff that's in his hand here reminiscent of something that you probably saw recently. And that's from the Book of Boba Fett. When we see a little more um, voluptuous version of Bib Fortuna show up. He's holding that staff and that pays homage to this vintage Kenner figure. So you can see the vintage Kenner figure in all its glory here. He's got his cloth goods. Uh, he's got his, you know, tentacle from his head there wrapped all the way around, goes around over to his back from the other side. Uh, quite the detail considering this is a toy for uh, small children, but you can see his face, his expression, his red eyes, his uh, red lips, his white teeth, uh, still standing the test of time today. I'll take this accessory out. We can have a look at that real quick. So that's his staff that he came with. Now, he never held the staff in the movie. It's just an accessory that uh, Kenner at the time put into with the figure to you know, give it some appeal when you're playing with him at home. So it's almost like a specter, like he's some sort of wizard or magician or whatnot. So I'll put that aside for a second. Let's have a look at the figure. Let's get a little nice close-up of his face there. Uh, you can see the texture, nice texture along his tentacles coming across the front all the way wrapped around the back and you know considering this is a toy and it's got these tentacles wrapped all the way around it's still a fascinating design that you know it's designed in a way where it's not going to break and it's not going to pull apart it's going to hold together and mine's got the cloth goods on them but i am missing the belt piece that comes across here but you can see articulation wise there is a little bit of movement on the head it's restricted by the tentacles of course and you can lift his arms up and you can see him lifting his arms up there that he's got uh, bracelets on. So they've put that design in there, even though they put cloth goods over it, they still took the time to put the bracelets on there. You can see his painted fingernails because he had these really uh, interesting hands in the movie as well when he met our droids. And uh, again, articulation on both arms. And if we open up that robe there, you can see his articulation on his legs. So you could have him sitting down. He does have foot pegs underneath there. So he has articulation in that, and that's what he looks like underneath. And here's what he looks like from the side. That's his side profile. So you can see he's holding that um, nice pose, attentive pose, stands alert, makes sure that he doesn't upset Jabba, or else he's going to end up in the Rancor's mouth. And then that's what he looks like from the back. So that's what we got in 1983, and that, that was our Bib Fortuna um, growing up. That's the one that got released with Return of the Jedi, and then continued on as we went dormant into the dark times, as they call it now in the Obi-Wan series, the dark times. And we wouldn't see Bib Fortuna again until Star Wars made its renaissance. So Star Wars, of course, went dormant, came back in the 90s with some interesting um, Timothy Zahn novels. And of course, the Dark Horse comics, Dark Times. And then, of course, with you know Star Wars making its 20th anniversary special edition, they re-released all three Star Wars movies, Star Wars, Empire, and Jedi, and then Power of the Force 2, Hasbro re-released the line. And we got, on the green card, a new version of Bib Fortuna in 1997. And that's this one over here. I have him on card. So I'll bring that over just so we can have a look at it first. You can see he came with a nice little holographic uh, image here. Now, these cards may look familiar because with the uh, 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm, Hasbro did release a number of Black Series figures on these cards in the Princess Leia in the ceremonial outfit. She actually came on this green card and it pays homage to these figure releases. So we got a brand new, the Bib Fortuna. And this time he's not coming with a staff, he's coming with a blaster pistol. So you can see he's holding the blaster there in the, in the bubble. And that's what the card back looks like from the front. And we'll turn that around over to the back. And of course, on the back, you get a profile of Bib Fortuna specifications. I used to love this. They used to have that on every single figure. And then the one that I have that I'd open, I'd always cut these out and hold on to them. Because it's almost like card collecting. So here it says he's a Twi'lek. He's loyal to Jabba the Hutt. And his weapon of choice is a holdout blaster. 
So you can see some other figures that were available at the time as well uh, on the packaging there. And of course, some vehicles, something that we don't really get much of anymore today, vehicles that were available. And then of course, a little checklist at the time. And this of course is multilingual because I live up here in Canada and then we get the Canadian and French version of these figures as well. So that's him on the card back. And of course, we do have a loose version of Bib as well. And that'll be this one here. Again, released in 97. So that's Bib for Tuna. Now he's got a complete upgrade from the previous one. Uh, cloth goods are gone. Yes, so you can see that the figures were a lot beefier. And then over time, they got a little more realistic. And, you know, he falls into the the beefier pose. So he already kind of, he's already kind of more reminiscent of the one that we see in Book of Boa Fett because his robes are so large on here. But there he has the blaster in his hand. So you can see that blaster, we'll take that out of his hand just to have a look at it so you can see that up close. So it's a unique blaster. There's a number of figures that came with that blaster and he was one of them. And then of course, as far as Bib goes, he does have his tentacles going all the way around his head here and you can see they travel all the way around the back, come out, protrude out of his head. And unlike the Kenner one that kind of went back under his robe here, this one comes across and goes over the front. Uh, kind of like he does in the picture, right? Uh, for the movie, you can see him in the picture over here, right? So uh, as far as articulation, because he has this um, plastic robe sitting over him, it impedes it a bit. You'd have to take it off to get, you know, the full version of Bib under there. But you can see they did take the time to uh, decorate his armor there. He does have his bracelets on. He does have that interesting, you know, the fingernails, the white fingernails. His hands are large like they were in the movie. This one's got boots. So he does have articulation there and, and you could you can turn him side to side. So he does have posability. They added that waist articulation to these Power of the Force 2 figures. And you can move the legs up and down. But in order to get him to sit, you'd have to take the robe off. And he looks a little bit different if you take that robe off. So underneath, you can see foot pegs, which is standard, of course, on all the figures. So that's the look of bib from the front and then from the side. Okay, then we turn around to the back and you can see he's got his robe and the way it flows. And again, it's in a lot more detail than, than the original one was. But because it's such a big, uh, bulky robe, um, it doesn't really do it justice because he wasn't, he was slim and tall, Bib Fortuna. He didn't really have this look where he kind of has a wide stance here. So that's what he looks like from the back. And then, of course, that side. And that's what we got in 1997. So let's put Blaster back in his hand. Let's stand Bib back over here. And then he'd get re-released again, that same figure would, in 2004 as part of the original trilogy collection. It's exactly the same figure. We'll throw a picture up. Just that he's got a new paint app. So they got a little bit better with the paint apps as they pro proceeded further. But they did re-release some of those figures and we never got new versions for a long time on some of them. Updates. Uh, they would update the main characters, but not really the background characters. But Bib would get an update in 2005 as part of the Saga collection. And this one for years was one of my favorite figures. I just love this figure. Uh, a lot more realistic. That's this guy over here. I love the face expression on this Bib. You can see he's got his mouth open. He does have a very scary look to him here. He's definitely scene specific with that look. But you can see how far they've come from 97 to 2005. So he's got the, you know, the tentacle in his head wrapping all the way around. We follow that around to the back. You can see it wraps all the way around, comes over his shoulder, right? And then comes back underneath over here. And it's exactly the picture, exactly the way it looks like in the picture. So they managed to nail that. Uh, they got the chin a lot better on here as well. He's got a really interesting chin. Uh, I wouldn't even say double chin. I'd probably say two heads with the way his chin is there. Uh, there's some slight articulation on the head. You can move it back and forth. You can see mine popped off because it, it is on a ball. Okay, so that just pops in there, stays in place. That way it doesn't get damaged when you're trying to move it around side to side. Now, articulation wise, you can move his arms up slightly, but the robe totally covers the top of his shoulder. But you do have articulation at the elbows here. So the swivel elbows. They move out and, of course, articulation at the wrists as well. So a lot more articulation on Bib Fortuna than we had in the past as they gotten a lot better as they were proceeding with the line. And keep in mind that this figure came out when they were still making prequel movies. So this is around the time that Revenge of the Sith came out, uh, 2005. So that's what he looks like, you know, from the front. You can't do anything with his feet. Okay, I have him sit standing on a stand there. Let's just pull the stand off for a sec. 
Uh, he does have pegs on the bottom, but of course his figure, his feet are stationed in there. He can't do anything with them because this is a hard plastic rope. That's not moving. That figure is designed to stand right behind Jabba the Hutt or stand right at the front of the palace to to greet uh, 3PO R2 or Luke Skywalker when he came in to visit. But that's his purpose. I had him standing right behind my Jabba the Hutt. He does have an interesting feature on the front here. He's got a dagger. He's got in his robe here. He's got a little uh, marsupial pouch style um belt that comes across here and he's got a dagger that's stuck in there and I, th I found that really interesting you don't you don't see it on the picture in the movie I'm not sure if it was any in any production stills or if they made it up but I really love that dagger I just want to show you that dagger as well just, and so it's got a gold handle you can see it's painted on there and then of course it's got a tip and he would store it in there and then you know if anybody ever upset him or he wanted to backstab anybody literally you can be a backstabber Bib Fortuna you can just take his dagger out and that goes in there so you don't lose it so that's what he looks like from the side and again this is swivel elbows and and the wrists on this side as well there's Bib and then we can turn around over to the back so you can see again the way the layers are at his robe even more so detailed than that previous one was and I love the way the bottom curls over and lines up with how he stands and it actually helps him stand uh, the flow of that cape looks really, really good when you have them sitting, standing uh, in your dioramas or whatever you're using them for. So that's what we got in 2005. Let's put his stand back on there. And we'll put him back in his spot so he doesn't fall. There we go. And we wouldn't get another Bib Fortuna for years. So, you know, the prequel movies finished. They went on to the Clone Wars content. They were making a ton of new figures based on a lot of new products that they had, especially in the animated series. And then, of course, Disney took over. And then, thankfully, the Vintage Collection line got reintroduced. And then fans like myself and yourself, because that's why you're watching. I'm sure you're a fan. Uh, we pitched to Hasbro. We want, we want to finish those original figures, that original 96. And Bib Fortuna was one of them. And our prayers were finally answered in 2000, uh, 2021 with Bib Fortuna on a vintage-style card back, like the one that he came with all those years ago. And that's him on card over here. And we managed to get the perfect rendition of Bib, Bib Fortuna right now. Now, you can see how awesome he looks on that vintage card back with the picture in the background. So you can see how far they've come with the figure detail-wise. And they've finally given us harder card backs too. So they're not as flimsy as they initially were. But we finally got the ultimate Bib Fortuna released on card. And there he is with the Kenner logo. And you can see the Return of the Jedi logo at the top there as well. Uh, he doesn't have any accessories, unfortunately, but they made up for that by making a fantastic figure, which we're going to look at in a second. Let's turn that card back around over to the back. You can see he's VC number 224, and there's some of the other figures that were released in the waves and future waves as well on the back there, and then a lot of different languages over here in the fine print. But that's the card back for Bib, and of course we have him loose as well to look at. So let's look at our ultimate version of Bib Fortuna from the Vintage Collection. So here he is, Bib Fortuna. Now, instantly you can see something that's come back that we never had from the Vintage one, and that's, of course, the cloth robes. We don't have any plastic robes, we have cloth robes. We don't just have one cloth robe, we have it in layers. We have another skirt piece underneath here. It's a completely different piece from the front one, and it just looks fantastic and amazing. And kudos to Hasbro. They, they've outdone themselves over here. They made a perfect Bib Fortuna. This is like a three, three quarter inch scale realistic version of something that's full, like real life. It's unbelievable. And let's just have a nice close up there of the face just so you can see how well that head's put together, how much further they've gone, even from the one that was fantastic from 2005 from the Saga Collection. You can see that again, the head tentacle coming on all the way around. Uh, to the other side over here so he's got the front piece that goes under his robe here and then he's got a second one the back piece here that comes around and meets under the front one over here so full detail wise there articulation wise uh he does have perfect articulation there swivel uh at the shoulder he does have the swivel at the elbows as well so you can bend him there he does have the swivel at the wrist as well so you can turn his hand in there and have him you know talking to 3PO and to R2-T2 and cursing them and trying to stop Luke or from coming in to see Jabba the Hutt but that's articulation wise on the arms there 
And of course, under here, you can see they've detailed and they've done his belt and they've done like the inner robe part here. And the bottom part here is cloth. And underneath there, you can see he's got full legs. The legs aren't impeded at all. You could have him sit if you had to, you know, bend his knees, uh, bend his feet. Now, I believe the legs are the same legs that were used on the Lando Calrissian Bespin figure. But again, sitting under the robes here, it's not noticeable at all. It's exactly what you'd expect Bib Fortuna to look like. So that's what he looks like from the front. Articulation wise, he does have movement at the waist as well. So you can turn him there. Uh, you can you can swivel it a little bit back and forth, but there's not much you're going to want to do with this guy than have him stand or maybe kneel down or sit as your action figure. So that's what he looks like from the side. Okay, you can see how awesome these robes are flowing over. The material is really good. You can see the way it's cut. It's like designed, like, again, it's it's movie accurate. You turn it to the back. You even can even see the way the arms are slit. Like it's, this is stitched on. It's totally crafted for this action figure. It's not just thrown over. And even the back of the cape here, like the original ones were, let me just pick up the Saga one from the back, just so you can see, see how it was layered over here, right? They layered that with real fabric here as well. As amazing as that is, they didn't need to go into that much detail, but they did. This is our vintage collection, ultimate version of Bib Fortuna, and they've gone all out. And I'm, I'll be um, a betting man to say they're probably not going to top this one or make another version of this guy. So this is as good as it's going to get, and it doesn't need to get any better. And that's a perfect rendition of Bib Fortuna, and that's what we have in our vintage collection today. And I couldn't be happier. Uh, he's finally complete and made to the best detail possible. So we'll just put him back there. And again, it wouldn't be fitting to end this review if we didn't have the Black Series version as well, which we do. Not every character has one, but Bib Fortuna does. And this one also came out uh, in 2022. So at the beginning of this year, and that's him over here. So Bib Fortuna has been released into the Black Series, and you can see a lot of detail again on his head. It's very, very similar to the... Um, the three three quarter inch one it's interesting usually if we're getting one in black series form or three three quarter inch form usually the other version follows suit in this case just slightly before the black series one, we got the three three quarter inch one and here's the black series one as well and detail wise again you can see his you know tentacle on his head uh it's got a little more paint detail than the three three quarter inch one what does the three three quarter inch one does have the blue paint as well but this one has a little more creases because it's a larger uh, version and that again you can see how we the way that flows around his head over to the back and you can see how it connects from here the second one and the the other one's over there and you wonder is his brain inside here or is his brain inside there i don't know but that's um bib fortuna articulation wise i have to say i'm a little bit disappointed in the black series one because instead of making this fabric they gave us a plastic rope now they've designed it in a way where you could take it off but again you take it off it doesn't look like him he always wears this right but you can just see detail-wise what he looks like there. Uh, very similar to the 3 3 quarter inch one. He's got his full belt, you know, flap sitting over there. Um, he does have the robe designed with layers here as well on it. And then underneath here, this part's plastic as well, so you can't sit him. He's going to have to stand. But he does, you can see underneath there how the legs, where he can, um, you can bend his knees, you can move his legs as well, you can stand him pretty much straight you're not really going to do anything unless you were to put a slit into the sides here and it does have the slit here so you can do a little bit with that if you took that main robe off but he's going to look a little awkward trying to sit him so that's what he looks like from the front but he'll look fantastic standing behind your Jabba and I'm, I'm never going to be a complainer when they make original trilogy characters in the new Black Series line especially with all the media you know, we're just grateful to keep getting these figures of characters from 40 years ago so that's what he looks like from the side Okay, and then if you turn around to the back, that's what he looks like from the back as well. So you can see it's layered there. And that's our Bib Fortuna from the Black Series 6-inch line. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I really enjoy making them. Bib Fortuna, again, he's been complete. We've managed to get the proper review in for him. And uh, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to making more videos. Take care.